Every, everything to God in prayer. I thought that would get your attention, everyone. Well, bring this down just a little bit for me here, uh, Stefan. Thanks so much. And so happy Sunday to you, everyone. And, you know, we're going to be focusing on prayer this morning and how appropriate that is. So before we get to that, I'm going to uh, share with you some announcements here. And um, I would like to share as to what's going on this week, next uh, few weeks to come, a whole lot happening. I hope you, uh, those who took advantage of the Tri-Tip fundraiser, I, I want to thank you first of all, and I hope you enjoy that meal. Some good, good Tri-Tip there. So thank you to all our helpers who organized and who served, uh, setting things up. Uh, serving that uh, evening and then also cleaning up. A lot of behind the scenes work, we appreciate you greatly. And so uh, the funds that came from that will help out for family camp. Really look forward to that time. So let me share with you what's going on this uh, week. On Thursday, I believe our deacons are going to be meeting. And then on Saturday, of course, it's a Saturday. Then you have the whoever shows up breakfast club that's meeting. And this time it will be at Panera. Now, do they go by just Panera or is it Panera Bread? What do they do these days? Anyone know? Uh, yeah, Panera. Okay. It's just like anything else. Like for those of us who grew up uh, long ago, it used to be Der, uh, uh, Wiener, Der Wiener Schnitzel, right? but no longer, it, they dropped the dirt there. And uh, no longer Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? It's KFC, right? So uh, no, no surprise right there. So Panera on that Saturday morning. And um, now we do have, uh, you do understand friends that June is coming up soon here. And so with June, um, we have a, a VBS serve day that's planned on Saturday the 8th. And that way we can get things ready for that vacation Bible school that's going to be happening later on that month. And so if you're interested in helping out, starts at 8 o'clock, unless you're Joe Hernandez, 8 o'clock on that Saturday, the 8th. And you might be thinking, you know, Tim, I'm just not too talented uh, with, yeah, I don't know how to do things, fix things. It doesn't matter. Just willing hands and feet who can be there. And we have plenty to do, and we appreciate whatever um, you can do at that time. And so that's Saturday the 8th, VBS Serve Day. And then now the next week will be our family camp weekend. And so we'd love, love to have you be a part of that. And if you're still uncertain as to what it's about, Travis and Stacy Vickers are here. They can fill you in about that. And then, uh, again, later on that same month in June, the 24th or the 28th, will be that Vacation Bible School. And if you haven't gotten to Margie yet about uh, questions or just wanting to serve, feel free to go ahead and talk with her about that. Now, what we want to do, obviously, is get as many kids registered and there as possible. And so what they can do, if you weren't able to grab a flyer, we have the flyers that will have the information and then the QR code where you can go ahead and register. Uh, on our website, lcchanford.org, uh, you can go ahead and just click on there, and you can register for uh, VBS there. And so please use those um, uh, uh, different ways to go ahead and get them registered so we can prepare adequately for those kids that will be showing up. All right, and then I also need to make mention of some, some birthdays, anniversaries now. And so if you look at your bulletin, we have uh, actually uh, uh, a birthday today. Tanya Sawyer has a birthday. Uh, and then uh, so uh, Robert Whipple. So Robert has a birthday coming up. So I uh, don't see the Whipples here, but happy birthday to Robert. And then uh, Kristen Dobbins. I saw you were over here. Now, I, I, you're throwing me off here. You did that purposely, didn't you? Happy birthday coming up to you later this week. And uh, that'll be on the 23rd. And then anniversaries. Uh, so Dave and Sarah Partlow have an anniversary coming up. And Armando and Rita. I'm normally looking over here for them. And so they have an anniversary coming up, as do James and Roxanne. That Roxanne is here. So thank you for showing up here, Roxanne. Happy anniversary coming up to you here. All right. Okay, and so I'm going to ask you to do this for me. Would you go ahead and stand, everyone? All right. Luke Vickers, welcome back there, brother. Looking good. You finished uh, another year. Good for you. Looking good, my friend. All right. Would you go ahead? That 
That's right. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here. All right, Lord, give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sinned against us, forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let you, all right, put those hands together now. Father, let you be on earth as in heaven, right here. That's right. Sing again now. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here. Lord, give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation. From the evil one, and let that's right, Lord, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The king, let's sing again. It's yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, yes it is, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The Father, let Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Now, let's go ahead, Lakeside. Use those hands to go ahead and greet one another on this Sunday morning.
Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Give us Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us, as we forgive the ones who sinned against us. Forgive them and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours. It's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, all yours, all yours. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. It's yours. It's yours, all yours, all yours, forever and ever. The kingdom is yours. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. On earth as in heaven. Here in my heart, on earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. Come on, let the Lord hear you. Come on, put your hands together, Lakeside. And that is our heart's desire. So let's go ahead and be seated as we ask for Jim to come on up here. Good morning. There's a lot of sunburst stuff, of Starbucks burst. Is this yours, Stan? <laughs> no, it's, it's yours. It's, it's his. <laughs> uh, Jim, right? That's what we just sang about. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> um, the call to confession. Our Lord Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. As God has instructed us in the great commandments, and because we have not lived in full obedience, let us now confess our sins to God, trusting Christ as our Savior and Lord. Would you pray with me in a prayer? Of confession. Lord God, we have given more weight to successes and our happiness than to your will. We have eaten without a thought for the hungry. We have spoken without an effort to understand others. We have kept silence instead of telling the truth. We have judged others, forgetful that you alone are the judge. We have acted rather in accordance with our opinions than according to your commands. Within your church, we have been slow to practice love of our neighbors. And in the world, we have not been your faithful servants. Forgive us and help us to live as disciples of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Accordance assurance of pardon I'm sorry he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed praise God The ladies come on up here, and this is why Jim saw this up here. I was going to do this during announcement time. And so 
Uh, I think, uh, Joe, I think I saw the Dilapus come on in there, right? Is uh, Tobias uh, back there? All right. Have Tobias come on up here. Tobias, come on up here for me, please. All right. And so before we have our missions moment here, um, I'm going to ask for Tobias to come on up here. For those of you who were present um, uh, last Sunday, of course, Mother's Day, um, we got to see a special video that um, had uh, <laughs> Tobias and his brother Maceo. And uh, we were going to have them do it here live, but uh, they were uh, already planning on being away, and so they were kind enough to allow me to videotape them. And they did such a great job just in helping us to honor moms last Sunday. And so, uh, Tobias, I just want to show my appreciation to you, and then on behalf of your brother as well, just thank you so much. A and see, for those of you who don't know Tobias, both Tobias and Maceo, just tremendous young men. Uh, tremendous young men of character. Um, they, they know the Lord and they want to honor the Lord. Even in just their young, you know, in their youth, it's very impressive. And I'm not here to embarrass you here, Tobias, but th this is the reason why I'm sharing this. In this skit, um, you had two people. You had the straight man and then kind of the funny man, right? Is <laughs> one would normally have in, in a, a, a two-person skit. And so Tobias was kind enough to be that funny man, the one who would be the one to kind of be honorary and not quite as helpful to, to mom. He's not really that way, but he <laughs> did his part so, so well. And so I really appreciate that, Tobias. And so this is what I want to do. I want to give to you, that's where Jim had let the cat out of the bag there, uh, <laughs> these uh, uh, starbursts <laughs> here, because I believe you do enjoy those. So for you and then for your brother. I want to thank you, Tobias. Thanks so much. <laughs> Our missions moment is going to be a little bit different this time. Uh, mostly, we want to give you updates on several uh, of our missionaries. So we have three uh, mission moments to present. The first one comes from Dr. U Ugo and Miriam uh, Gomez with Ch Ch Global Che Enterprises. My name is Dr. Hugo Gomez. I am a physician serving on the Global Che Enterprises, overseeing the work in the Community Health Evangelism region of Mesoamerica, which includes the countries from Mexico through Panama. We are mainly about uh, education. Community Health Evangelism is that effort that integrates these four things prevention of disease, evangelism, promotion of good health, and discipleship. When we integrate all of that, after a couple of years of training, the community starts developing more than what they had before. And they can then um, prioritize their needs. some foreign aid uh, teams, short-term teams, water teams, construction teams, and many other varieties of teams coming to help. But those teams don't come to do for the people. They come to join them, work along with them, sweat with them, and then uh, help them in whatever stage the local project is at. Those who have helped us, I have done it in several ways, and I have tried to summarize those ways in five aspects. Praying, you can get involved with praying, telling others about it, 
they can also grow themselves, they can come to a field, they can invest with us, become supporters, regular or occasional, but they can invest. It's their guided group. And number five, sending others also. Those who need to go and want to go, but uh, they have obeyed the call and they want it to come, but still need help to make it there. Those are five ways I think we can encourage people to get involved with global enterprises. We'd also like to share just a little bit about what's going on with the coals. Um, they were in Israel, and just after they decided as a family that it was unsafe for them to go back, and they, um, after being in Israel for many, many years, were not going to be going back. Um, the following day after they made that decision, Jessica's dad had uh, multiple heart attacks and he, he was in the hospital for a long time. Then he seemed to be doing quite a bit better and just a couple of weeks ago he relapsed um, and he is now in hospice. So we would really appreciate you guys praying for the Cole family as um, they go through this transition as well. And um, they are, they've been back in the States since October. Jessica now has a job. I believe Sean has a job by now. I haven't heard for sure on that one. But um, God's providing for them financially. But we ask that you would pray for them with Jessica's uh, dad's health. Our second video is uh, from Sarah Kane with Remember New in Thailand, the ministry that ministers to uh, w children and young adults who might be trafficked. Hi, I'm Matthew Boyd, a left-handed starting pitcher for the Detroit Tigers of Major League Baseball. And it's not an honor to take a I'd like to tell you guys about an awesome organization that's real close to my heart that my wife and I have been a part of for the last four years. It's called Remember New, a nonprofit that brings children out of the sex trade to prevention. Remember New's mission is ending child sex slavery through prevention. They have prevention homes in 15 different countries around the world. And through this awesome program, they've prevented over 1,800 kids from being sold into the sex trade. In 2015, my wife and I had the awesome experience of actually going to Thailand. We saw the evil in downtown Bangkok in the red light district, showing advertisements for kids. We also saw God working in the homes where the kids were just acting like children should, with innocence, playing with each other, learning God's word, going to school, a highlight definitely from our time in Thailand was meeting our sponsor child. Um, she was just awesome and it was so cool to finally get to know her. We had seen pictures and heard her backstory from Remembered New, but getting to see her in like everyday life was so cool. This is our sponsor child. When we first met her, she was a little shy. We came in a little excited and we, you know, Hi, we're your aunt and uncle all <laughs> from your class, so happy to meet you. And um, by the end of it, we were just attached at the hip. She did not want us to leave, and we were just... You didn't want to leave her. No, we didn't. It was really, really, really special, that bond that we made with her. An experience that we'll never forget. It's always going to be special to our Seeing the village that our sponsor child could have been sold from, Compared to the River New Home, where she grew up in a safe environment, to knowing where she is today, and knowing that God's hand was at all but protecting her and guiding her, we're just thankful and blessed that we could be involved in it through Remember New. 
you feel called to protect the king through Remembered Move, whether you're an individual, a church, a company, or an organization, I know you won't regret it. I believe that child slavery is an issue that can be reduced or even eliminated if people like you and I do our part to answer the call. Another um, mission family that we have supported is the Tamayos. They were in Asia doing a skate ministry. And um, after nine years, they felt like they were supposed to come back to the United States for various reasons. And so they are in the process right now of going through um, doing counseling with Link Care in Fresno. It's a, a counseling center that specializes in counseling for people who are in some sort of missions or ministry. And so they are going twice a week, and each one of them is getting counseling. They, they uh, dedicated a month toward that. The kids, um, they have two boys, Chaz and Tripp, and they've been being homeschooled with an online program. The boys are quite behind because of all the saying goodbyes, packing, moving, unpacking. And so they will be going to King's Christian next year. But they are right now working on getting their homeschooling done and just pray for them that they would have the perseverance to do that. They probably, uh, TJ said, they probably will be working on that until about the time school starts up again for them. So just um, prayers for perseverance for them with that. But also, TJ mentioned that they have been blessed to be able to live with his mom since they've been back in April. And um, they can stay there as long as they need to. But as you can imagine, for extra people in the home, and um, it would be ideal for them to find a place, but everything they've looked at is too expensive right now uh, for them. And so if you, any of you guys know of anyone who has a rental, um, has a heart for people who've been in ministry, if you could let one of the missions team know, then we could let them know about that. Our last video is from the Neppers, who work with Hope of the Nation. And um, I think this video will be self-explanatory. Yes. Hello, this is Harold and Connie Nepper from Tanzania, East Africa. We're your missionaries there. We want to give you a quick video update of some things that have been going on. First, I want to say thank you so much for all your prayers. I'm at 100% feeling great. Monday, I started teaching at the Bible College, the Freedom in Christ. So I'm super excited. The other thing we wanted to quickly share was that uh, God has blessed us with being able to get a coaster, which is a Toyota minibus that holds 29 passengers. And since we have 56 students at our Bible college this semester. It's very helpful. We've been taking half the student body to one of our church plants and half to another one every Sunday uh, to help support those ministries. And so thank you for all of you who have been involved in that. And if you want to be involved and you haven't been, there's a QR code that you can use to link to our website. Blessings. Bye. So we appreciate you guys listening to these updates. Um, there was one video we had wanted to share, but we couldn't get it in the right format for sharing with you guys. But if you follow Hope of the Nations on Instagram, you'd be able to see that. And it's um, about in one of the church plants. One of the church planters was going door to door, and he came across a 12-year-old boy named Alex who started a church and has 50 kids in his church and when the church planter asked him why he started the church he said because there's no church for for kids to worship at and so hope of the nations has offered him when he has finished secondary school he gets a scholarship to go to their bible college <laughs> So just uh, another wonderful ministry that we get to support as a church. We support them through prayer, 
but we also support them financially. And if you would like to be part of supporting any of these ministries or all of them, you can add a bit to your monthly payment, your monthly check, however you um, tithe here at, at, at Lakeside. And just um, let Linda know how much is going to the foreign missions or which mission you would like to your extra part to go to. Thank you. It's time for uh, the congregational prayer at this time. Let's pray. Loving God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you for raising Jesus from the dead, the first fruits of your new creation, and for sending your spirit that we too may have new life in Christ. Thank you for giving us your spirit. We thank you and praise you for the power and promise of your Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all our ways. Help us live in accordance with your Spirit, setting our minds on what the Spirit desires so that we may be joyfully alive in Christ. Thank you for giving us your Spirit. We thank and praise you that the Spirit testifies to us that we are your children and that through the Spirit we can approach you in confidence as our compassionate Father. Thank you that as co-heirs with Christ, we will share in his glory. Comfort us with the knowledge that your Spirit also helps us in our weakness and intercedes for us according to your will. Thank you for giving us your Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit, yes. one God, now and forever. Amen. Yes, amen. Friends, as we continue in our service of worship, we're, we're kind of feeling this out to see how this goes, but you heard last week that we're doing things differently with our, with our youth. And so what I'm going to do is uh, those who are fourth grade and above, um, we're going to have you go ahead and be dismissed at this time to go ahead and meet with Miss Margie. So you may go ahead and be dismissed, those fourth grade and above. And uh, I'm sure you're wondering if those in children's church, what about us? Well, your time will come in just a, just a bit here. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's sing that again now. Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. us this day our daily bread forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thy
Stand Lakeside for thine. As you're being seated, everyone, let's go ahead and ask our children's church kids to be dismissed. Just a few things I want to share before uh, we get into God's Word this morning. Just some thoughts about, you know, the, what an awesome missions moment that was. To see what's going on, you can see what God is doing in other parts of the world. And um, that's the same God who's here. And that God can do amazing things here as well. Um, you know, it's interesting that in every church... There's a place of holy leadership, right? like a pulpit, whatever. Some churches, you know, they're different where they'll have like a little little steps that go up to where the, the, the priest or the pastor will preach. And the deal with that is, is it's, it's an elevation that the word is elevated above everything else. And we're a little elevated here, um, <laughs> Right. The concept is the same, um, but, but also leadership here. And the reason why I say that is I want to kind of share with you. Um, last summer, during our annual business meeting, we made some changes to our ministry structure, ministry teams. And we, we focus now on three teams, passion team, 
um, spirituality team and a service team. And so uh, one of the teams, that it takes a while to kind of develop this. Well, there's been something going on the past two months with the spirituality team. And the spirituality team kind of helps overseas, uh, you know, Bible studies or BBS, um, prayer, um, fellowship. So this team has kind of been developing a little bit. And I'm going to ask some of the team members, they're, they're going to come up a little later, they're going to help me out with, with this message. But I just want to, if, if you would like to, if you're interested on being on this team, let me know. Um, because I think God is, is up to something really, really cool. And obviously, you've got to know the Lord Jesus first um, to be on this team. <laughs> and you've got to have a passion and a hunger to want to be used by God. So think about that. And um, also with this message, so there's four weeks, including today, four Sundays until family camp. And um, by the way, with, with family camp, uh, thank you, everyone, who helped out yesterday with that fundraiser. That fundraiser is so important. It's a lot of fun, but for family camp, it's a great opportunity for the Lord to do some amazing things. And for what I understand, Terry, there's some food, right, for sale? Or yes, there's a lot of leftover meat. Leftover rice. meat, rice, beans, rolls. rolls. So be thinking about that after church if you want some of that. And I believe uh, if you still want to go, talk to Travis and Stacy, right, about signing up. All the way up until the last day if you want to. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> now they're deep in a parking lot, though. I'm <laughs> so four Sundays until then. And so instead of jumping back into Luke, I want to do a little four-part series called Back to the Basics. And... Um, so there's a little video here we're going to watch that kind of helps promote this back to the basics, our first, our first subject. Okay, back to the basics. So one of the, the basic things, the most important thing is prayer. So that's the subject that we're going to focus on. And the main idea is that prayer was the integral part of the life of Christ. And as his followers of Jesus, we are called to follow the powerful example of our Lord and King. Let, let's, let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on this message. Lord, would you make us a people that, that hunger and thirst to be with you in prayer? Those two words, God, hunger and thirst to be with you in prayer. Lord, give us the courage to be constantly and boldly in prayer for everyone around us and even those, Lord, that we would say are our enemies. God, will you take this back to the basic concept of the power of prayer? We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 
So this morning we'll be looking at uh, scripture pieces of the four different books. We'll be looking at uh, Mark, Ephesians, Matthew, and 1 Thessalonians. And like I said earlier, we're, we're, we are beginning this four-week series called Back to the Basics. And I'm sure you've guessed. I'm sure you have guessed it's a series about the basics, but the foundation of our faith. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be focusing today on prayer. We'll focus on scripture, confession, and service or faith. You know, when you think about these four things, here's a great prop right here. You think about these four things. Now, in order for me to sit on this thing, this stool, I need something sturdy. Right? <sighs> Solid. But what if one of the legs were missing? I'd be like, what if there's only two? Fall back. What if there's only one? So the four basic things that make a church strong is prayer, scripture, service, faith. You can take a chair or even a table. In order for it to be sturdy, you need those four things. So we're going to go on this awesome journey together in this series. As we head back to the feet of Jesus, we're going to be listening and learning as the disciples with, with Jesus leading the way. In Hebrews 12, 2, it says he's the author and perfecter of faith. And who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Interesting, as I'm looking at that little portion of scripture, it wasn't on the screen, that's okay. But who, who for the joy set before him. Jesus had joy heading to the cross for you. Amazing, isn't it? And another way of looking at Jesus leading the way is getting back to where the church originally began. In seeing Jesus as our coach. See, as a church, whether it be Lakeside Community Church or, or Hanford Baptist Church or whatever church of Jesus Christ, we need to stick with the original blueprint in the early church. The original church. As Jesus being a coach. Now imagine a coach for a basketball team that focuses and teaches on the fundamentals of the game. Imagine Jesus getting in our grill when we're not playing the right way. You know, I remember when I was in, uh, playing junior high basketball, I had this coach. He was a good coach as far as the X's and O's. But man, he was mean. I remember one game, I think it was the third quarter, calls timeout. Timeout. Comes up to me, he goes, boy, how many fouls do you have? Coach, I only have one foul. Thinking that was good. He says, you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> he got in my grill. Imagine Jesus getting in our grill when he sees, hey, you're not doing church the way I created it to be. So we have a responsibility to try and emulate the original blueprint of the early church. And speaking of Jesus, have you ever wondered how he was able to accomplish all he did in such a short time? What was the secret to his ministry? 
Yes, he was the only begotten Son of God. Yes, he sent, he sent Jesus to the world to save the world through him. Yes, yes, he accomplished this by allowing him to be crucified on the cross and raised again in three days. Yes, but the question remains, how? How? How was he able to accomplish it all? Well, he had the benefit of being the divine son of God, so there's that. But there's another part of Jesus' life that cannot be ignored. His prayer life. His prayer life. Jesus was always in conversation and communion with the Father. And from what we see from all the four Gospels, it appears that Jesus kept a regular consistency of prayer throughout his life. But we must be careful by saying, well, of course he did. He was God. We are not Jesus, so we can't make it, we can't make it, we can make excuses why we don't need to follow Jesus' example of prayer. No, the opposite needs to take place. If prayer was a foundational part of Jesus' life, then it needs to be a foundational part of our lives as well. You know, I have come to enjoy talking to God. I love it. I love being able to share with him everything. The praises and when I'm really struggling. I tell you what, I let the Lord know. I let the Lord know. And I love it. Because when I walk away from prayer, I felt like I've been heard. You ever need that? Don't you not like it when you're talking to somebody and you're like, you know what, all I really need from you, I just need you to listen to me. I don't need any feedback from you. I don't need any what if, or you should have done it this way, or you should have said it that way. I don't need that from you. I just need you to listen. And that's what God does. He listens to me. And I can walk away feeling like I've been heard. And it's awesome. Now let's get into the main teaching. You're probably, well, aren't we in the main teaching already? <laughs> There's a Christian theologian named Richard Foster who said something about this that I really like. He says, to believe that God can reach us and bless us in the ordinary junctures of daily life is the stuff of prayer. But when we pray, I mean genuinely pray, the real condition of our heart is revealed. This is as it should be. This is when God truly begins to work with us, and the adventure is just beginning. Again, getting back to that prayer time with the Lord, when you could just genuinely share your heart, like, like you're like, oh man, Lord, I'm just really sharing who I am and what I'm struggling with. You really learn about who you are. And it's an adventure, and it's awesome. Prayer is an adventure. It's an adventure of faith. An adventure of vulnerability hope and sadness and grief and all the things in life throws at us. See, I've learned I can't just be vulnerable to anybody because they might judge me or misunderstand me. But I can be vulnerable with God who does not judge me, who just loves me. 
It's holy ground. Holy ground. I love that story where, 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 where God, he, he, he shows himself to Moses at the burning bush. Remember that story? Moses comes up closer and God, you hear that voice, that voice of God, Moses, Moses, take off your sandals. For where you are standing is holy ground. That's what prayer is. It's holy ground. It's just you and God. In fact, there's so much more to prayer that I can't even cover in a week. And today, We're going to cover a few ways the Bible describes prayer. And the first thing we're going to look at is that that something that we see in the life of Christ. Again, he was constantly in communion and prayer with the Father. And so the first thing we see in our bulletins or up on the screen is this word, constant. Constant prayer may feel like a daunting task. But it should never feel that way. It should always be a passion for believers. Passion for believers. Like, I can't wait to get to the prayer place with God. In 1 Thessalonians 5, there are three things that should keep us motivated in prayer. You'll see it up on the screen. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You know, when I was working on this message earlier in the week, I was focusing on that all week. Focusing on this, on those three things. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Lord, I'm having a lousy day. Rejoice. (laughs) Puts things in perspective. Pray continually. Talk to God when you're in a car, man. At times, I'll just hit the button, stop radio. Stop satellite radio. Stop. I'll just talk to God. Constantly in prayer. And then give thanks in all circumstances. Man, if you could do that. But I understand, because I still struggle with it. I've dealt with it for so long in my life. Life gets very challenging, and I I develop a a woe with me. Oh. I'm not sure if that's a Holy Spirit thing right there or not. (laughs) <laughs> but a woe with me attitude. But God says, turn that into a time of thanksgiving. Because the time when you're feeling woe with me is an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to let God reveal some powerful, beautiful things for us. But the problem is we get stuck in it, don't we? And that's what Satan loves. Yeah, you stay stuck in that, you punk. Can't stand you anyway, because you're God's creation. We get stuck in it. Don't get stuck in it. Thank God for it. It'll change your perspective. And then it goes on to say, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You see, God's so perfect. Everything is in line with his perfection Even your life and your ups and downs, God is using it all. That's his will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's an important feature because there aren't many places in the Bible where we're clearly told that the very will, what God's very will is for us. In fact, there are many people. Maybe even some of you here this morning are trying to figure out, what is God's will for me? Well, one of the keys is following a pattern of prayer. 
Easy to do, right? No. It's not easy because there are always like a billion distractions. A billion temptations to, re, to, to, to remain consistent in prayer and thanksgiving. We're just always enamored. I remember telling this story before when I was at the Christian Reformed Church and, and, it, and I would try to find this isolated place in that big church to pray. And I found the closet, man. No one comes here. No one, man. I get to spend time with God. Our secretary, out of, just out of the blue, out, just comes and opens the door. She saw a little light on. I'm like, oh. And I knew it wasn't her. She's cool. It's Satan trying to distract me from spending time with God. But yet that's God's desire for us. It's a life of constancy with him, to be with him in prayer, to fight through the distraction and the temptations. And it's amazing to think that the creator of the universe, he wants a consistent relationship with us. You know, there, you know when, sometimes when you're a kid, you idolize certain people. Maybe it's an athlete or a movie star, whatever. And you would think, oh man, if I can only just, just touch their hand, or, or if they would only just give me a little time, it would make my life so wonderful. But they're just sinful people just like me. But the fact, the creator of the universe, he wants to consistently talk to me. As if I was the only human being on earth. That's how awesome God is. And he wants us to pray incessantly, communicating with them all the time in every circumstance. So here's an idea for all of us. Instead of seeing this as an impossible burden, think of it as a blessing. A tremendous blessing of a heavenly Father who, who wants all of you, all of your life, all, all of your thought, all of it. Imagine that you fall in love with a girl or a guy or whatever, and, and, and you, you, want, you want all of them, man. I want all of you. I'm so in love with you. And they're like, eh, you might get a half of me. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm generous. Three quarters. You got three quarters of me. No, all of it. And try talking to him about simple stuff, the ordinary stuff. It doesn't always have to be a time of crisis or desperate prayer. Think of your life, your prayer life, as a constant open line of communication. A phone call that never comes to an end with someone on the other side or the other end who never gets tired of hearing of you, hearing from you. So let the, let the, let the Father's love and desire you uh, embolden your prayer to him, which leads to the next main word. Bold. Bold. See, bold prayer takes practice. And I admit that it's, it's a little difficult to grasp that we must have this reverence, this awe for God, and yet at the same time be bold in our prayer life. And that's why this next portion of Scripture is going to help us with what I just said about this reverence and awe, but yet bold. Let's look at Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, 
just as we are, yet without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive the mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. See, we can have confidence and be bold as we approach the throne of God because what Jesus has already done. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. That means he opened up the throne of Almighty God to us. That we can come with confidence that he hears us. See, Jesus was both fully God and fully human and was tempted just as we are tempted. You mean to tell me that Jesus was tempted with lustful sexual thoughts? Yes, he was. He was tempted with everything that you, you're te- everything. Because Jesus doesn't want you to say, oh, but Jesus, you were never tempted with this. He would say, yes, I was. Everything you've been tempted with, I was tempted, but I was without sin. That's the difference. So when you offer your prayers to God, you can trust that he understands. He understands. And he empathizes with your situation. I want to go back just real quickly to enhance this a little bit. Back in the Old Testament, a minute. We're not looking at Scripture, but just an understanding here. See, Christ is superior to the priests of the Old Testament. And his priesthood is superior to their priesthood. See, to the Jews, the high priest was the highest religious authority in the land. He alone entered the most holy place in the temple once a year and and make atonement for the sin of the whole nation. Once a year. And like the high priest, Jesus mediates between God and us. That's kind of what I talked about last week with, with the ascension. Jesus went up to heaven and he sits at the right hand of God and his primary responsibility there is one of them is to intercede for you when you pray. See, he is humanity's representative and he assures us of God's forgiveness. And Jesus has more authority than the Jewish high priest because he is truly God and truly man. And unlike the high priest, who could go before God only once a year, Jesus is always at the right hand interceding for us every second of the day. Compare every second of the day to one time a year. You have God at your disposal right now. He's always available to hear us when we pray. And and Jesus is like us because he experienced a full range of temptations throughout his whole life as a human being. And we can be comforted knowing that Jesus faced temptation and that he can empathize with our weaknesses. And we can be encouraged knowing that Jesus faced temptation without giving in to sin. And therefore, he'll provide a way out. You see, we're either in a situation where like, doggone it, Lord, I really hate the fact I'm being tempted by this sin. Will you help me get out of it? Yes, I will. Or we're like, oh, you know what? I kind of like this sin. Let's see where this goes. We got to be in a place where we're like, no, 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 no. I don't like that sin because I know what it's going to do to me. It's going to make my life miserable, and it's going to affect those I love around me. I don't want to go there. But Satan's like, yes, 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 go, go, go. Because he's all about destroying. That's all he's about. And lastly, concerning this verse of Hebrews 4, prayer is our approach to God, and we are to come boldly. 
See, come, some Christians approach God meekly, with their, with their heads hung low, afraid to ask God to meet their needs. And others pray flippantly, giving little thought to what they say. See, we come with reverence because he's our king, but we also come with assurance because he is our friend. I can honestly say that Jesus Christ is my best friend. Now, going a little further, we read in 1 John 5, 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. See, there, there again is that word confidence. In both passages, the same Greek word is used, and it's original, originally means freedom, openness, confidence, boldness, and I love the idea of having freedom when we come to God in prayer. People who understand that they are free have an easier time to be bold. And because Jesus has set us free, because he's the high priest and, full, and the fact that he, is fully, he fully understands what it means to be human, we can boldly bring all our prayers to him. The last one is this. For everyone. See, to be both constant and bold in prayer, it's a huge task. It takes practice. It takes faith. It takes you out of your comfort zone. And folks, that's one of the things we just got to get past. Our comfort zone. we got to learn to take risk. Forget about what people think about you. Get out of your comfort zone. Be willing to go through spiritual pain with the purpose of getting stronger and becoming more like Jesus. Amen. Get away from apathy. Get away from casual Christianity. Be the real deal. With that said, I can tell you that the world around you needs your consistent prayer. You need consistent and bold prayer in your life. Because life's too complicated. Life is too frustrating. It's too much at times. And we need that same thing that Jesus needed when he was on earth. We need prayer. We need fellowship with the Father. And everyone needs prayer. And even those you don't want to pray for. People you may not like. Your enemies need prayer. Matthew 5, says, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. There are times I'm like, no, Lord. No. He's a jerk, God. But Jesus gives absolute clear direction to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Now, to be fair, to be fair, Persecution looks different for Christians in different parts of the world. For you, it may be someone who bullies you or makes fun of your faith. It may be in the form of abuse or, or being treated poorly at school or work at home. Whatever, whatever it is that comes to mind that you consider an enemy, that person you need to pray for. I remember I was working, before I got into ministry, I was working for a place. I became a Christian in that place. There was this one guy. Man, he, he, he teased me. He kept poking fun of my faith. 
And I'm like, Lord, man, I just want to rip this guy's face off. I had to learn the hard way. This guy is lost. He needs Jesus. Pray for him. And another important aspect of loving your enemies, if you love your enemies and treat them well, it truly shows that Jesus is the Lord of your life. And this is possible only for those who give themselves fully to God because he can only deliver people from natural selfishness. And we must trust the Holy Spirit to help us show love to those for whom we may not feel love to. Now, Jesus goes on to explain this a little further in Matthew 5, 46, 47, about praying for our enemies. It says, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? See, it's easy to love and pray for those whom we love and care for. It's difficult to pray for those who have harmed us or wronged us. And yet those are the people that Jesus says we need to be praying for. Those are the people who need our prayers. Just imagine, with, just for a second, imagine when we greet in, in our service time. That's cool, isn't it? Walking around, hey, what's up? It's good. We pretty much enjoy that because no one here should be our enemy. But think about greeting everyone in here who is your enemy. Think about that. Everyone here is my enemy. And I'm going to go and say, hey, what's going on? That's what Jesus tells us to do. And at the end of the day, Aren't we so glad what Romans 5, 8 says? That God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Even in our sin, Jesus traded his life for ours. And love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Let me close with this. As I mentioned earlier, prayer was an integral part of Jesus' life and ministry. And no matter what was going on, he always made time for prayer. And he always had, he always sought fellowship with the Father. In Mark 1.35, it says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Just real quickly, when I surrendered my life to Jesus, the youth pastor Dave at the time was discipling me. And I remember asking him a question. Hey, man, when do you pray? I pray in the morning. What time do you get up? I get up about five in the morning. What? (laughs) Well, how long do you pray? Uh, Hour and a half. What? I thought that was unheard of. But I get it now. He was following Jesus' example. Jesus made space for prayer. And as we seek to learn from him, we acknowledge the power of prayer in the life of Christ. And as we follow him, we too must be people of prayer. It's a foundational piece of of, of the life of Christ. Constant prayer, bold prayer, prayer for everyone. And there there are some challenges for us this week. What time... Every day this week, can you stop and pray? What big thing, what concerning thing or hard thing do you need to be bold in prayer over this coming week? And what enemy needs your prayers this week? Make space for it just like Jesus did. Now, I'm not going to close in prayer. But I want to encourage you is this. Members of this new spirituality team, as we do a closing song, they're going to come up here. They're going to make themselves available to you if you need prayer. 
And I want you to listen to the Holy Spirit. Be willing to get out of your comfort zone and just say, hey, yeah, you know what? Can you pray for this for me? They're not going to sit there and say, well, you know, I think you should do this. No, they're just going to listen and they're going to pray. You know, folks, let, let's, let's be like some of these other missions that are going on out there where, the, where God, where you see it, man. Where we don't sit there and say, that's really cool, but it's happening over there. Why can't it happen here? Why can't we just listen to the Holy Spirit, be vulnerable, and let people just pray for us? So I don't know what God's going to do with that. If no one shows up, I'm not going to sit there and say, what a bunch of losers. I'm not going to do that, because obviously that's not about that. But sometimes, folks, in love, in faith, we got to take risks and be willing. So if you need prayer, you got some folks ready to pray for you. Hello. Okay, this part wasn't planned, once again. Oh, um, a month ago, maybe about a month ago, two weeks, three weeks, I, I um, overshared. I was a little bit embarrassed. I wasn't really completely embarrassed because the Lord touched me. He touches me through music. He touches me through the things that life throws at me and has been since even before Mark died while raising my kids. But I listened to music. And the words are meaningful to me. And this one, while gardening, I was listening, and I didn't understand it. I looked it up. It's another Amy Grant song. But it says, God loves a lullaby in a mother's tears in the dead of night, better than a hallelujah sometimes. What does that mean, better than a hallelujah? How's that better? God loves a drunken cry. The soldiers plea not to let him die better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our miseries, God just hears a melody. Beautiful the mess we are. That's true. The honest cries of breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah. The woman holding on for life, the dying man giving, giving up the fight are better than a hallelujah sometimes. The tears of shame for what's been done, the silence when the words won't come, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our miseries, God just hears a melody. Beautiful the mess we are. The honest cries of breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah. Better than a church bell ringing. Better than a choir singing out. Singing out. I checked it out. What that means, it's the sacrifice of prayer. It's the sacrifice of praying when you don't know what to say. Of trying to feel good when you hurt because he lives in us his spirit if we know him his spirit's in us he went through what we go through badly so he does understand and when pastor said Jesus has been tempted I thought not with what I have and I'm sure we all think that but yes he was and he bore the stripes he bore what we were supposed to do so anyway, I just had to share that again, once again, over praying. But I need to t tell you this, too. It's not finished, but through the prayers of the people that heard me cry out publicly, things are moving, things are changing. Maybe not in a direction that I want them to go, but I know this. His work is already finished. My kids will know him one day. They will walk with him. They will bend a knee. And I am going to keep being uncomfortably vocal. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> we love you, Marie. Thank you. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to Carry every, every 
everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not care. Go ahead and stand as we sing this next verse. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. All right, here's where we get the down here, everyone. And celebrate the friend that we have in Jesus. Everybody has trials and temptations. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. Ooh, Yes, we can. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's to us, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever his heart is moved. Everybody has fears, everybody got worries. Ooh, 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 ooh. Everybody knows sorrow, devastation. Ooh, 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 ooh. But we can lay our burdens down. Yes, lay our burdens. Oh, yeah, what a friend! What a My sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon and forever. betrayal for oh, he is faithful he fills me up and my cup run it over no more betrayal for oh, he is faithful how he has proven it over and over no more betrayal for oh, he is faithful he fills me up and my cup run it over no more betrayal, for he is faithful, how he has proven over and over, over and over. What a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon and forever and ever. Oh, what a friend. Here we go. What a friend we have in Jesus. East to west, my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever. That's right. And forever. Forever and ever. Come 
on, lift up your praise legs. Come on. All right. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Isn't God amazing? Thank you for being in here. I, I truly hope that every single one of you, no matter where you're at in your journey of faith, that you're like, wow, I felt God here today. And it's so good. It's so addicting. It's like I got to have more of this true, pure God in my life. So bless you. Enjoy uh, an amazing day, an amazing week. And Lord willing, let us come back and do this all over again. Amen.